Hey guys, in this video we're going to do a review of the Hubson X4 Pro. It's also known as the H901S and as you can see it's a pretty large quadcopter with uh, a camera gimbal. Uh, but this is actually the higher end edition. I think the one that uh, they sent me is the standard edition. And uh, let's look at the size box. This, this box is absolutely gigantic so I have to put you on my, my hat cam here so that I can get you all in the uh, the the, fo the video for this huge box. So anyway, this, the, the edition that they sent was a standard edition. It just has a one axis gimbal, which is not really a gimbal, it's more like a, a thing that just pitches the camera backwards so you can look at the ground. It doesn't actually have any stabilization. It comes with um, this transmitter. It's 2.4 gigahertz for control and 5.8 gigahertz for FPV. And it has a little FPV monitor here. And uh, they have a couple of other higher editions. Uh, the, the medium edition comes with a three axis gimbal with the same transmitter. And the, the high edition comes with a three axis gimbal with a fancier transmitter. So let's get all this stuff out of the box. It's, it's really big. Wow. Okay. We got some probably instructions in here. So we got a bunch of stuff here. We got the quad, a um, bunch of different boxes. A box for the transmitter. Get that separately. Let's see here. We got a box for the propeller guards. Looks like a another uh, gimbal mount for your cell phones. I think that's what this is for. And you get a one to three S uh, balance charger. We'll look at that in a little bit. And, oh, I think this is the camera. That's the camera. We'll take a closer look at that. Kind of GoPro style. Get some propellers. And here's the quad itself. And it looks like they put the battery in there. So let me get all this on the table and we'll look at each thing one by one uh, using my better camera. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the stuff that came inside the package. Here's the Looks like documentation. Let's see what we got here. So looks like we've got some diagrams on weight, disclaimer warning, and the actual manual itself. Let's take a quick look at it. Usually these Hubson manuals are pretty decent, so I'm expecting it to be um, well documented. So I'll take a look at this later and I'll uh, point out anything interesting that, that I find in the later part of the video. Okay, here's the uh, box. Looks like we have propellers in here. And got some other stuff. We got a, looks like a width antenna, I think that's for the video transmitter on the quad. Got a prop removal tool, I think. Got a micro USB cable. And here's all the props. So, so you get two sets of props, you get eight total, and uh, they're going to be labeled, um, as you can see here, A for counterclockwise, for the way you would lock them on the motor, and I'll cover that later. Uh, it doesn't say what size these are. Here's the camera. It's a 1080p, and does it say how many frames per second? It doesn't say. Got a looks like a typical GoPro style wide angle lens. Let's 
So it just says 1080p. It doesn't say how many frames per second it is. There's no LCD on the back. You get a looks like a micro, not a micro, but a mini USB port on the side. Uh, micro or micro SD card slot on the top. I don't think the uh, battery's in there. Yeah, no battery. It's pretty light. Let's see here. Here's the battery. 3.7 volts, 650 milliamp. And what else do you get here? Yeah, looks like it comes with its own mini USB cable. And I think that's it. This is the um, additional camera mount. I think it's for cell phones. So, yeah, it looks like there's also a servo in there as well. You can hear that. So I guess you would uh, mount your cell phone in here and uh, mount this to the quad and use this to pivot down to take uh, videos or photos with your cell phone. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this, but we'll take a look at that a little bit more. Okay, moving on, uh, we have some prop guards. And in here we get some, so we get some screws and the hex wrench. Probably need those screws to mount these prop guards. Yeah, probably here. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be using these either. Most likely not. I'm not going to be flying it indoors. Okay, here is the balance charger. Get the instruction manual. So here's the charger, one to three cells. Uh, looks like a micro Bosi connector there. And a two cell balance lead and a three cell balance lead. You got a couple of banana plugs. The side and your this is 11 to 18 volts for DC power for your wall adapter, and this would be the wall adapter. And we get a 12 volt output, 5 amps. Looks like it comes with a normal power plug here for US, and there's the barrel plug for that port right there. And here is the banana connector and your you have a JST and an XD60. I think that's for the main battery there. And here is the actual plug itself that goes into the, um, the wall adapter but it comes with this plug for the wall which is not a US plug. I think this is either Europe or Asia. Definitely not US, so I guess I won't be using this cable, but I've got plenty of these cables around for my, you come with like PC power supplies and computers, so not a big deal for me, but if, uh, if you're buying this, you might want to double check, make sure that they're sending you the correct plug for your country. Alright, so this is the box for the transmitter and FPV monitor. Get a patch panel for your 5.8 gigahertz video. Okay, so here's the transmitter out of the box. And you put your patch antenna up here, like so. It's a bit heavy, so I'm going to leave that off for the moment. Um, gimbals feel pretty good. Not bad. Definitely uh, more hobby grade than toy grade. Get a little. Uh, sunscreen here for your small monitor, which is nice. So there's a little plastic there, I'll take that off later. Get a little uh, neck uh, lanyard uh, grip here for your neck strap. Get a bunch of buttons here, up, down, on, off. You get some trim buttons here. Uh, I think, let's see here. 
Get a couple of dials here at the top. This is for the gimbal, that the three-axis gimbal that doesn't come with this model. Um, a GPS. I think this one's for al um, altitude hold, and this is for a GPS hold. And home is returned home. I'm not sure what V is. Need a couple of ports back here, video and USB. I, I think that's for programming this thing, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think it's for anything else. And got a little port back here. It says, I think it's a CHG, I think that's for charging. Can't tell what that is. There's a hole there. Uh, open this up. Try to hold it. Yeah, so looks like we're gonna need some AA batteries, it seems. So it looks like it takes four AA batteries that aren't included. And I don't know why they have this little charge port here. I think it's probably for nothing. Is uh unless you can take this out and use a uh, lithium ion battery. Uh, it's possible. Let me see here. So yeah, this comes out. Okay, okay. Yep, so a regular JST connector and uh, thinking this is four AA batteries at one and a half volts. So three. So like a 2S LiPo probably work in this. I'm not exactly sure what the the voltage range is. It doesn't, you can't really see inside there. But uh, I think that's probably what that's for. Maybe that is a charging port for that. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the quad itself. Um, as you can tell here, this looks quite a bit familiar. It looks a lot like the uh, Phantom series from DJI. And it's got the same sort of brushless motors and uh, this, these legs that protect the gimbal. And it's got a dampened uh, mount here for the camera. Uh, but obviously this is not as um, high-end as the Phantom because the Phantom comes with a 3-axis gimbal, I think, out of the box, um, even in the standard edition. So this one, uh, the standard edition only comes with uh, this, uh, basically it's not really a gimbal, it's a little servo here that will allow you to pitch the camera down, but there's uh, no stabilization other than uh, the these uh, dampeners here that will dampen some vibration but if you're flying this in windy conditions where it's going to get tossed around a little bit here you're going to uh, see that in the video and uh, I'll demonstrate that when we fly this uh, you'll see the difference between this and say like uh, the uh, Mavic Pro which also I'll fly that at the same time and you can see the difference in the video um, the uh, gimbal mount here is actually removable and you can actually upgrade this to the three axis gimbal that the high end edition comes with, or you could add um, your own three axis gimbal if you if you'd like and uh I'll put a couple of uh three axis gimbals that are compatible with this in the in the description below if you guys want to check those out. They roughly range around two hundred to three hundred dollars for a three axis gimbal that will uh, fit this and uh if uh, you're do get this and you like the quality of the flight and everything and want to continue to get better video I highly recommend upgrading to a three axis gimbal uh, you get this power cable here for the camera that plugs into the mini USB port and that will uh, send the video feed back up here into the craft and then out through this uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, video transmitter and this antenna here that goes back to the uh, screen on your on the transmitter so you can see what's going on and then you have one servo lead here that goes to the servo that powers the um, pitching of the uh, camera here uh, there's also additional um, servo connectors here for if you have a three axis gimbal to control the uh, other two axes if you uh, desire there's a power lead here, a uh, JST connector, and this is for a 3-axis gimbal because you're going to need that uh, for the brushless motors. And it's a, uh, most of the 3-axis gimbals will take a JST connector, so it'll just plug right in, no problem. So in the back here, I've already taken the uh, battery out, I'll show that here in a second. It uses a standard XD60 connector. Uh, 
the battery was uh, pretty uh, tight to get in there and get and pull it out. Uh, so uh, it's not going to once you get in there, it's not going to move around or jiggle around a lot, or, or, or around it at all. And uh, you can then uh, close the the back here with this uh, door that has a little latch, and it should stay secure as long as the battery is all the way in. You got a uh, set of LED lights under the motors here. There's four of them, and uh, they're going to indicate some things like whether you need to do compass calibration. Uh, whether or not you have a GPS lock, etc. I'll, I'll go over some of those things a little bit later. Let's take a look at the battery now. So here's the battery that it comes with. It's pretty big. It's a um, 7,000 milliamp hour 3S battery, not a 4S battery. I think the Phantoms uh, power off of a 4S battery, so it's a little bit unusual, but um, it should give some pretty good flight times. I think it's around 25 minutes, I believe. That's what the specs say. And uh, so this should take quite a bit of time to charge up. I believe it's a couple of hours. Uh, and they only give you one battery, and it comes with an XT60 with a balance lead. So um, I believe uh, Gearbest does sell extra batteries if you're looking to get some uh, more flight time. Okay, so I'm going to pop in the camera here, show you how to do that. It's pretty easy to do. Got a little thumb screw here in the front. Just loosen that up. And this pops off. And just stick your camera in here like so. I'm just gonna latch it under, underneath here and Put your thumb, thumb screw back in. And then you want to attach the mini uh, USB cable here on the side, like so. Like that. And that should do it, you should be good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna go over some of the transmitter functions. Um, and power on the quad and show how uh, you calibrate the compass and some of the other things you need to do. I recommend that if you do get this, um, when you do all the initial testing, don't put the props on first, just in case anything weird happens, um, so that you know what to, to do or, or you know what to expect when uh, you go actually go fly this. So um, for the first time when you go power this on, just leave the props off just to make sure and go, you know, do, do a run through everything, make sure that you understand how all the functions work so that you don't inadvertently arm the motors and send uh, the quad flying somewhere you don't want. Anyway, so moving on, uh, I got my eight AA batteries in the transmitter. They actually takes eight, not four. I didn't see there was an extra row of four batteries on the other side. So this thing is quite beefy, quite heavy. And um, another thing is there's a little screw here in the bottom and you actually need that otherwise this door will just fly open. Um, there's doesn't latch in so make sure you don't lose that screw. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll turn on the transmitter. I'm going to see if I can get that into shot. It, and it basically just doesn't show you much, just shows you the voltage of the battery inside the transmitter along with the um, trims for the sticks and a, a blank screen. Uh, there's a couple of functions on this transmitter that don't do anything. It's this dial here on the left, the T1 doesn't do anything, and this B doesn't do anything. Um, I think you should probably have all the switches on the down position, and uh, that's because, uh, for example, the a, a switch here, if it's down, it doesn't do anything, but if you have it up, it'll activate uh, headless mode, so you want you normally want that down, and then uh, this GPS switch here. The down position is for GPS hold, and the up position turns off GPS hold and will turn on altitude hold mode. And so basically, you have altitude hold mode only and no GPS. So usually, you want to fly with the GPS mode on, which is the down position. And then for the home switch here, the down position it doesn't do anything, but if you have in the up position, it activates return to home. So usually you want that down and then you'd only flip it up if you actually need to um, activate return to home. The B switcher doesn't do anything, so don't worry about that. The T2 dial here uh, actually 
um, pitches the uh, camera back and forward, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. So I've just got a little 1300 3S battery in the quad, um, just to turn it on and test things out. I'll plug it in. So it's going through its uh, startup routine here and saying check gyro sensor, don't move the aircraft. And it's in manual mode right now. So it probably means that I was moving it around while it was powering on, so I need to actually uh, power it down and uh, power it back on again. Oh, actually, never mind. It it passed that uh, sensor test, and now it's asking me to do a uh, ca uh, compass calibration. So there's actually two that you need to do. You need to uh, do one where it's level, and then you, you basically turn it twice, and then you have to turn it vertical with the nose down, and then turn it twice. So I'll show that here. So you got the quad like this, and then you're gonna um, you're gonna turn it twice, and then it'll it'll switch from compass one to compass two when it's done. So I'm gonna rotate this. That's one. two and then it turns green and it's still flashing and now it's asking for compass two so I have to turn it nose down and then rotate it twice around this axis that's one that's two and then we get some uh, yellow LEDs and white LEDs And uh, I have a GPS signal, but I don't know if you can see that here. So I'm gonna focus there. You can see I my GPS coordinates here. But then if I put my hand over the top of the quad where the GPS antenna is, you get a GPS signal lost. So that's and when you get that, you get a, the transmitter beeps at you. And over here on the Left side, you get some telemetry, get your compass heading, and some other numbers that I'm not exactly sure what those are at the moment. I think some of these are like your height and your distance. Um, but you, if you don't want this clutter on your screen, you can, I believe you can hit the exit button or the up button here, and that will turn that off and hit the up button again, and it'll bring it back on. And uh, that voltage there is the voltage in the quad, and this voltage here over here is the voltage in the transmitter. That's the one on the right. Left is the quad and right is the transmitter. So right now you can see we're in altitude hold mode. And if we flip it up, we go into GPS hold mode. So I actually had that one backwards from before. Sorry about that. Um, normally you'd want to be in GPS hold mode for that one. So have that one up. And then if you flip this switch up, this will, this heading will turn red, indicating that we're in heading hold mode. Let's see here, turn that around. That'll turn red when you flip that switch. And then that's normal mode or heading heading hold is off. Or head I'm sorry, headless headless uh headless mode. That's where you it doesn't matter which way the nose is pointing, and you can just uh use the right stick to forward is forward and backward is backwards, it'll it'll bring it towards you or send it away. Right is right, left is left. It doesn't matter which way the nose is pointing, that's what headless mode is. And you would activate that by flipping the A switch up. And then we have this, uh, the home switch here. Flip that up. And then you get return to home mode. And then back down, that turns that off. So we're in GPS hold mode right now. Let me go ahead and uh, I'll turn the camera on so you can see the image that'll come through. It's turned off right now. You have to actually power the camera on the button in the front. There we go. Now we got an image of what it's looking at. And then we can use the T1 dial here to um, point the camera down. You hear that going there. 
and you can see the servo moving the camera. And then uh, to arm the motors to start your flight, you can either uh, pull the sticks in to the middle and down, or down and out. So either one will work. So I'll just demonstrate by pointing, pulling it down and in. And you use the same motion to disarm the motors. So that's all you need to do. And that pretty much will get you ready for your flight. You want to make sure you've got a GPS lock. And then you have uh, GPS hold mode um, active. So that you can basically hover the craft. And it's not going to float around and drift around on you. So that's pretty much it for the unboxing and preliminary uh, review of the Hubson X4 Pro. I will have another video soon uh, where I will we'll do a flight demo and we'll... Uh, Get some uh, aerial video for you. I hope you guys like this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll try and address those in the next video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.